Hi everybody and welcome to Intro to Digital Forensics. Let's begin. Forensics is the application of science to investigate crimes and establish facts. With the use and spread of digital systems, such as computers and smartphones, a new branch of forensics was born to investigate related crimes, computer forensics, which later evolved into digital forensics. Think about the following scenario. The law enforcement agents arrive at the crime scene. However, part of this crime scene includes digital devices and media. Digital devices include desktop computers, laptops, digital cameras, music players, and smartphones, to name a few. Digital media includes CDs, DVDs, USB flash memory drives, and external storage. A few questions arise. How should the police collect digital evidence, such as smartphones and laptops? What are the procedures to follow if the computer and smartphone are running? How to transfer the digital evidence? Are there certain best practices to follow when moving computers, uh, for instance? How to analyze the collected digital evidence? Personal device storage ranges between tens of gigabytes to several terabytes. How can this be analyzed? Assuming this employee is suspected in the figure above, we can quickly see the digital devices that might be of interest to an investigation. We notice a tablet, a smartphone, a digital camera, and a USB flash memory in addition to a desktop computer. Any of these devices might contain a trove of information that can help with an investigation. Processing these as evidence would require digital forensics. More formally, digital forensics is the application of computer science to investigate digital evidence for a legal purpose. Digital forensics is used in two types of investigation, public sector investigations and private sector investigations. Public sector investigations refer to the investigations carried out by government and law enforcement agencies. They would be part of a crime or civil investigation. Private sector investigations refer to the investigations carried out by corporate bodies by uh, assigning a private investigator, whether in-house or outsourced. They're triggered by corporate policy violations. Whether investigating a crime or a corporate policy violation, part of the evidence is related to digital devices and digital media. This is where digital forensics comes into play and tries to establish what has happened. Without trained digital forensics investigators, it won't be possible to process any digital evidence properly. Okay, and now let's answer the question. Consider the desk in the photo above. In addition to smartphone, camera, and SD cards, what would be interesting for digital forensics? And that would be the laptop. Great, and now let's move on to the uh, next task, which is digital forensics process. As a digital forensics investigator, you arrive at a scene similar to the one shown in the image above. What should you do as a digital forensics investigator? After getting the proper legal authorization, the basic plan goes as follows. Acquire the evidence. Collect the digital devices such as laptops, storage devices, and digital cameras. Note that the laptops and computers require special handling if they're turned on. However, this is outside the scope of this room. Establish a chain of custody. Fill out the related form appropriately. The purpose is to ensure that only the authorized investigators had access to the evidence and no one could have tampered with it. Place the evidence in a secure container. You want to ensure that the evidence does not get damaged. In the case of smartphones, you want to ensure that they cannot access the network so they don't get wiped remotely. Transport the evidence to your digital forensics lab. At the lab, the process goes as follows. Retrieve the digital evidence from the secure container. Create a forensic copy of the evidence. The forensic copy requires uh, advanced software to avoid modifying the original data. Return the digital evidence to the secure container. You will be working on the copy. If you damage the copy, you can always create a new one. Start processing the copy on your forensics workstation. The above steps have been adapted from the Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations, 6th edition. More generally, according to the former director of the Defense Computer Forensics Laboratory, Ken Zatiko, I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm not sure, I apologize if I'm not uh, pronouncing it right, digital forensics uh, includes uh, proper search authority. Investigators cannot commence without the proper legal authority. 
chain of custody. This is necessary to keep track of who was holding the evidence at any time. Validation with mathematics. Using a special kind of mathematical function called a hash function, we can confirm that a file has not been modified. Use of validated tools. The tools used in digital forensics should be validated to ensure that they work correctly. For example, if you are creating an image of a disk, you want to ensure that the, forensics image, uh, the forensic image is identical to the data on the disk. Repeatability. The findings of digital forensics can be reproduced as long as the proper skills and tools are available. Reporting. The digital forensics investigation is concluded with a report that shows the evidence related to the case that was discovered. And now let's answer the question. It is essential to keep track of who is handling it at any point in time to ensure that evidence is admissible in a court of law. What is the name of the documentation that would help establish that? And that will be chain of custody. Awesome. And now let's move on to the last uh, task, which is practical example of digital forensics. Everything we do on our digital devices, from smartphones to computers, leaves traces. Let's see how we can use this in the subsequent investigation. Our cat, Gato, has been kidnapped. The kidnapper has sent us a document with their requests in Microsoft Word document format. We have converted the document to PDF format and extracted the image from the Microsoft Word file for your convenience. You can download the attached file to your local machine for inspection. However, for your convenience, we have added the files to the attack box. To follow along, open the terminal on the attack box, then go to the directory Intro Digital Forensics is shown below. In the following terminal output, we change to the directory containing the case files. Okay, so let's do what we are asked to do. So let's open the uh, attack box. Okay, so let's open a terminal and go to the intro digital forensics uh, directory. So uh, let's see, uh, root and then rooms and then intro digital forensics, intro digital forensics. And there you go. And now let's just list the files that we have in this directory. So ls. Okay, so let's continue reading. Uh, document metadata. When you create a text file, some metadata gets saved by the operating system, such as file creation date and last modification date. However, much information gets kept within the file's metadata when you use a more advanced editor, such as Microsoft Word. There are various ways to read the file metadata. You might open uh, them with, uh, within their official viewer or editor or use a suitable forensic tool. Note that exporting the file to other formats such as PDF would maintain most of the metadata of the original document, depending on the PDF writer used. Let's see what we can learn from the PDF file. We can try to read the metadata using the program PDF Info. PDF Info displays various metadata related to a PDF file, such as title, subject, author, creator, and creation date. The attack box already has PDF Info installed. However, if you're using Kali Linux and don't have the uh, and don't have PDF Info installed, you can install it using the command that you see right here. Consider the following example of using PDF info uh, on the PDF file called document. And we can see the example right here. And now the PDF metadata clearly shows that it was created using Microsoft Word uh, for Office 365 on October 10th, 2018. Yes, we can see it right here. So the creator is right here. And of course, the creation date, we can see it right here, right? Okay, so let's answer the question. Using PDF info, find out the author of the attached PDF file. Okay, so let's find out um, the author of uh, the file called ransomletter.pdf. Okay, so all we need to do is type in PDF info 
and then we just type in the um, name of the file, which will be ransom letter dot PDF, enter. And the author is this right here. This is the author, and Gree Shepherd. Okay, so let's type that in. So, and Gree Shepherd submit. Oops, I think I spelled something uh, wrong here. Let's see. Uh, of course, I did. So, Shepherd like this. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, part here, photo EXIF data. EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File Format. It is a standard for saving metadata to image files. Whenever you take a photo with your smartphone or with your digital camera, plenty of information gets embedded in the image. The following are examples of metadata that can be found in the original digital images camera model or smartphone model, date and time of image capture, photo settings such as focal length, aperture, shutter speed and ISO settings. Because smartphones are equipped with a GPS sensor, finding GPS coordinates embedded in the image is highly probable. The GPS uh, coordinates, uh, that is latitude and uh, longitude, uh, will generally show the place where the photo was taken. There are many online and offline tools to read the EXIF data from images. One command line tool is EXIF tool. EXIF tool is used to read and write metadata in various file types, such as J, uh, JPEG images. The attack box already has EXIF tool installed. However, if you're using Kali Linux and don't have EXIF tool installed, you can install it using the command that you see right here. In the following terminal window, we executed exif tool image.jpg to read all the exif data embedded in this image. Okay, and we can see it right here, of course. If you take the above coordinates and search one of the online maps, you will learn more about this location. Searching Microsoft Bing Maps or Google Maps for the coordinates that we see right here reveals that these coordinates indicate that the image was taken very near to the Museum of London. Uh, and we uh, only replaced uh, degrees with um, the degrees symbol for our search to work. Okay, we noticed that the coordinates were converted to decimal uh, representations on the search page. Using EXIF tool or any similar tool, try to find where the kidnappers took the image they attached to their document. What is the name of the street? Okay, let's do it. So, what you need to do here is just type X if uh, tool uh, and the image is called letter image dot jpg. So, we type that in. So, letter image dot jpg and you press enter. Perfect. Okay, and now let's uh, find the coordinates. GPS position. Okay, here we have the coordinates. Okay, so we can just copy them. Okay, and now I'll go to Google Maps that I have open right here already. I'll type it in or I'll paste them in like this. And what we need to do now is change the um, uh, the letters D E G for degrees to the symbol instead. Okay, so let's go back here and I'll copy the degrees uh, symbol right here, and I'll paste it in here, and I'll paste it right next to uh, the. Um, uh, number 51 now let's see paste like this and then I'll do the same next to the number zero here like this and let's search and find the name of the street where the image was taken and that is milk street okay so let's type that in and see if we are right okay so milk street 
Yes, we got that right. So the name of the street is Milk Street. Perfect. What is the model name of the camera used to take this photo? Okay, and we can just scroll up here and it's supposed to be at the top someplace, at the top of the metadata, of the metadata that we have uh, uh, show up on the page here. So let's see, let's see, let's see. We need to look for... Mm -hmm. We need to look for camera model name. Let's see where that is. Um, so it is. Okay, let's see now. Camera model name. Okay, so this is the name of the um, uh, the camera, the model, the model name, right? So we can just copy that. Uh, I don't think that worked. Let me just give it a try. Oh, it did work. Okay, perfect. So let's submit. And we are right once again. Perfect. So we are done with this room. Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would uh, really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. Okay, talk to you next time.